Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Grant and I'm the host of Remington Graphics and today I'm excited to announce the release of a new tool for you guys to use for Blender. This is called Procedural Pro and it allows you to generate procedural textures based upon three different colors really easily and it's really awesome. The video you're seeing right now is just a quick demo I created about a couple different textures you can make. There's a lot more you can do with it, but this is just a demo. Also, here's some other textures I made. I uh, added this dust on top of this wood. I went ahead and created this sort of dirt ground texture. And then I also went ahead and created this sort of patchy grass texture. If you guys want to go ahead and download this, it's available on my website, store.remingtongraphics.net. There's a link down in the description, and then there will also be a card on the upper right corner of the screen right now. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in and actually take a look at the node itself. When we import our node into our Blender project, this is what it looks like. We have the base color, secondary color, and tertiary color. In addition, we have a bunch of sliders down below, but I'll go over those in a second. The base color is the most prominent color, secondary color is the second most prominent color, and the tertiary color is the third most prominent color. So in those order, if you want it to be a mostly green texture, you would want your base color to be green and your secondary color to be something that complements green and your tertiary color to be some sort of other color. In addition, you could also plug in image textures into these, which is what I did with those floor and um, grass materials to get a really realistic result. Now down below that, there's an option called texture scale. And texture scale is basically how big the Musgrave texture is, because this is all based off of Musgrave textures. The bigger the texture scale, the more detail you'll have, and the more um, condensed and smaller the sort of little chunks will be. So if we look at this grass material right here, if you can imagine it, um, all those chunks that you see getting a lot smaller, they get smaller as the texture scale increases. Down below that we have detail, and detail affects how... It's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> it's somewhat like scale, somewhat not. Detail is basically um, boosting up the resolution of the texture and making it more dynamic, I suppose. Typically you won't have to go over 20 for the detail because 20 is just about the max our eyes can see, but if you're getting really up, and cl or up close to it, you might want to boost it up to somewhere around 50. Underneath the detail we have lacunarity. Now lacunarity is kind of something funky to deal with because it's something you don't typically come across unless you're very familiar with moose grave textures. If you look at this texture right here, you'll notice there are big chunks and then little dots on the outside. If you have a high lacunarity, those big chunks will be made up of smaller little dots. If you have a lower lacunarity, the little chunks will just surround the outside of those big chunks. Next we have Roughness, Reflectivity, and IOR, which are all parts of my PBR Master Shader. They can also find on my website. If you don't know what that is, you should definitely go check it out. It makes PBR material creation a lot easier. But anyway, with these you can tweak the integrated shader to get it more to your liking, and you can get a shader output, that way you don't have just a texture, you have an actual material, which is really awesome. Next up we have the bump strength, which basically just changes the strength of the generated bump map. Now this is important to use even if you're not necessarily using the built-in shader, because there is a normal output on this, where you can use the normals in your project, so it's a good idea to be able to tweak that bump strength to your liking. Below this we have a color input called extra bump, and underneath that we have something called extra bump strength. Now what the extra bump is for is when you plug in an image texture for the base, secondary, or tertiary color. That way you can just reroute the bump map or the image itself into extra bump and tweak the strength with the extra bump strength. The nice part about this is you can actually just plug in any image texture and it'll automatically generate a bump map for that. So you don't have to worry about necessarily getting a bump map for your texture. You'll also notice that this shader has multiple outputs. We have a shader output, a color output, a fac output, and a normal output. Now what the shader output does is it uses the integrated shader, the PBR master shader, straight into the shader, that way it takes the texture, plugs it into the shader, which is tweaked down here, and outputs it so you can plug it right into the surface. What the color does is, let's see here, let me switch into rendered mode and add a shader diffuse shader. If we plug in the color to the diffuse and the color to the surface, you'll now notice we just have the color. And this is really useful for, um, if, for well, if you want to create your own material. And we can also plug in the normal right here into the normal here, and you can see that we have that same normal. And we can change the bump strength right here. So that way, if we want a really strong bump, we can boost it all the way up to 1. And if we want a lighter one, we can drop down to 0.8 or something like that. And we also have this thing called FAC. Now, if you're familiar with um, most of Blender, you'll be able to plug these things into other things. Um, typically they're used to mix things. It's just a black and white representation of that texture. So you can see it actually almost looks like the moon. Um, anyway, so 
you can see it's just a black and white representation of that texture and say I wanted to mix a let's see here glossy and a diffuse shader together here and I can use the fact as the um, mixing uh, factor I guess uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to see but let's see it's changed diffuse to this bluish color and I can really see um, what parts of it that's kind of it's really hard to see actually now that I think about it um, let's see maybe if we change this to like red uh, it's still gonna be hard to see but it basically allows you to um, use this as a factor or for whatever you might like. I found it really good for roughness, maps, and uh, similar things to that. And as stated earlier, we have the normal here, which I don't think can be plugged into the displacement, can it? Oh, it can! So you can plug the normal into the displacement to if you choose to do so. Anyway, there's lots of different uses for this tool in Blender. Some that I've found are creating ground materials and textures, creating little planets, which I, I actually find really um, fun, uh, using the factor as a sort of roughness or a sort of displacement map on other models to make them more realistic, especially things where the textures are seamless. You can use that to make it seem a little bit less repetitive. And this tool is also really great for creating procedurally textured rocks. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tool and this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below so other people know how to find it. And also hit subscribe if you want to be notified when I upload new videos and release new products. Anyway, have fun with Procedural Pro, and I'll see you guys later. Adios.